So the current time is 3.58 a.m. I have not slept. Will I regret this decision? Absolutely. Okay, so one of the bars that we're going to slash dinner places we're going to requires um, cocktail attire. So yes, I have a fashion degree. Yes, I kind of know what that is, but I've never actually like gone to a place that actually has like a required attire. So here we are. This is what... Hi, Toph. Hi, Toph. What, babe? All beaded to look like a decaying jack Where? Okay, so anyways, um, one of the things about cocktail attire that you have to keep in mind is keeping hemlines and necklines appropriate attire. But I'm also loving that like this is an option because this is something I would wear. 1,000%. 1,000% something I'd wear. So, anywho, let's go. Also that, that right there. I'm more of a pants gal, so let's go. Okay, I think we figured it out. I think we have Good selection of items to take to Vegas. So let me show you. Here, these are our traveling clothes. I always try to layer when I travel. So leggings, matching sports bra. We've got this really, really soft, uh, so the like yoga hoodie. But I love that it has the little mock neck. So super excited for that. Then if I still get cold or need something just to layer with, got the denim jacket right there. I'll probably pair just a little tank top under that and we'll be good to go. In conference day one, I've got these really fun mules with the chunky little details on them. I've got this super cute, it's brand new, um, little Stitch Fix shirt with this fun little, it's see-through, um, peplum pop puff sleeves. Blech. I've got these super chic joggers, which I need to try on and make sure I don't need to hem them because if I do, I need to hem them super quick. And then I'm gonna layer it all with my Veta capsule jacket. I'm actually gonna take the sleeves off of it so I can pop these sleeves. So yeah, that is conference day one. Night out day one, what we're doing is we're wearing this lovely $4 vintage dress that I found at Twice as Nice. My favorite deal ever, super fun for fall. It is short, so super great for cocktail night out. We're gonna pair it with these tights, the sh mules from before, and we've got this super chunky, fun um, little bag. And then I'm trying to decide if I wanna layer it with my blazer jacket, or if I wanna layer it with, I've got a like leather dr er, jacket that I got in Paris. So I'm trying to decide if I want to do either of those. So, oh gosh, Toph. Toph is playing footsies right now. And it's like, it's scary. My toes are not safe right now. Anywho, and then conference day two, I'm gonna go with the timeless capsule, you know? We're gonna go with the timeless capsule white button down. We're gonna pair it with the Veta capsule leggings. I'm gonna pair it with my passion footwear shoes, which I'm super excited about. And then we're either going to layer this with the jack, the blazer jacket as well, or the leather jacket, just kind of depending on how cold it is in the day one of the venue. And then for a night out on the last night, which is our longest night out, so we're we have to be nightlife attire. So we're definitely layering the leather. I have this multi ways. Um, free people like bodysuits. So I'm going to tie that in a really sassy way. And then I'm pairing it with these cropped vintage pants that I actually cropped and hemmed myself. So we're going to be doing that. And then I still don't know what shoes I'm going to wear. I'm either going to wear the, these guys, or I'm going to have to fix a pair of shoes that I've got in my closet. That is like a strappy heel. So I don't, I don't know. And then of course I've got backup looks, just a timeless black dress from Veta Capsule, and then this other really fun vintage piece 
that I got in, I'm ordered from an online store in England. So I will link that in the caption as well. But these are both extras just in case something either breaks, snaps, doesn't fit, gets a stain on it. I can just throw these on really quick and I'm still comfortable and good to go. That's a really quick rundown <laughs> of what I'm bringing to Vegas. And of course, as always, I will show you what I wear every single day. Just a quick like before we head out the door. So yeah, now it's time to basically pack it all, put it in a suitcase. Let's go. Toph, I know you want to go with mommy. But somebody's got to entertain daddy while I'm gone. I'll see you on Monday. Mwah. Bye, baby. All right, we checked the bag. We're walking to security. Let's do this. On the way here, we basically had to kill like three hours. <laughs> so we left the house. Went and did some errands, and then we were on the way here to the airport. And Fielder's like, you'll get there three hours early. And I'm like, babe, we can't check my bag three hours early. Like, we have to, like, has to be, like, at least two and a half. He's like, oh, uh, what do we do? So we basically killed, like, 45 minutes in Target. Totally worth it. Got some snacks. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Okay, we've now made it into said airport, into terminal. And I found where the Starbucks is. It was all the way the other way. So I have to go walk on the other side of the terminal to get said Starbucks because I'm already tired and I need something to snack on. So we're walking the other way now, but there's a lot of people here for late night flights. So nothing's really open. But you know, I kind of expected that, so. I've never really taken a night flight before. I've always taken an early morning or like a midday. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Well, that was disappointing. Um, Starbucks is closed. That's fine. So we're gonna try, there's a Dunkin'. So we're gonna try Dunkin'. Everybody talks about Dunkin'. It's a funny story, I've never had Dunkin'. So, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. Or just, I just need some coffee. Something to eat and coffee, we're good. Okay, so the only thing, the only thing that was open was McDonald's. So, we're gonna eat some fries. We're gonna get some work done while we wait for the plane. And then we're gonna get on this plane. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna meet Kaylee in Las Vegas, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully before midnight, but we will see. We will see. So far, everything is smooth sailing, so thank goodness for that. And yeah, finally have some food, so let's just crank out some work, guys. Okay, <laughs> so apparently chicken nuggets don't come with fries at the airport. That's fine. I didn't want my favorite fries in the whole wide world. traveler I can't find Kaylee and I don't know what to do I have called her literally 20 times and I don't know whether I should and I just called the hotel to make sure that she hasn't gone there and gotten a key um, so yeah I don't know what to do it's almost 1 a.m. in Las Vegas and I want to go into my hotel bed and sleep so anywho all right let's go find Kaylee Okay, we found Kaylee. It only took 23 phone calls and over an hour of looking, and she is now coming to me. So I'm staying in one spot. She's gonna come find me. We'll be fine, we'll be fine. We'll make it to the hotel before 2 a.m. at this rate, so stay tuned. She should be walking up literally any second. Look who I found! We finally found each other!
Oh, we got. There's the burger. <laughs> There's the fries. We're happy. We're, We're so full. Happy. <laughs> now we can go to bed. Okay, y'all already know. Olive and June traveled with me. So this weekend I'm wearing Angelfish and BP. And this is what I did. Here we go. Adjust class. We've got the breakfast of traveling champions. Weird colored sausage, awkward hash browns, and soupy oatmeal, and some juice. We just, I was going to show you lunch, but we've all decided we were so hungry for lunch that we forgot to show you lunch. So lunch was great. Um, I had a grilled veggie vegan wrap. Delicious. 10 out of 10 recommend. Okay, so we got back a little bit ago, but I decided um, from day one, I decided to take a nap because I was, I was a little tired, y'all. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> So I wanted to show you this amazing goodie bag that I got and just kind of, you know, recap the day. And they asked a really fun question that I really want to share my answer to because I think it sheds a lot of light on like being an influencer and everything. Anyways, let's dive in this goodie bag. This, of course, is the lovely goodie bag that we got today at the second annual Your Bowl is Beautiful Summit. It has this gorgeous... It has this gorgeous um, program in it that talks about all the sponsors, what we did today, and all of the things. So definitely, like, super exciting. I got this at another um, booth today, but I got an early bird goodie bag, so I got, like, extra stuff, which I'm super excited about. I got a Susan G. Coleman Nevada little bag. Got a fun little water bottle. I got this, which I'm super excited about, but it's like a little, um, just like kit. So it's got a little loofah, a little hairbrush, a little pumice stone, a little, little body brush, you know, all the good things. And then some more goodies right there, just more free stuff, a fun night out bag, a shopping bag. Um, I am like so excited about this. This is just a little drink little glasses just lots of little goodies on all of the businesses here um little sunshine in a bottle oh my gosh it's so this speaker is very pregnant and she is stunning pregnant like let me tell you she's walking around just glowing at today's conference so got some more sunscreen just like i mean Y'all, there's just so much stuff in here. It, like, just, just does not stop. Like, there's still more stuff in there. This was all in my goodie bag. A amazing day full of amazing talks and just, like, conversations. And one of the things... I'm trying to sit down. <laughs> um, one of the things that they talked about was, um, you know, one of the last questions was talk turned to trying like really hard to like re like channel what I said because I think what I said I'm not gonna be able to put it as eloquently as I did in today's conference. But um the first thing or I guess the last thing anyways the takeaway from today we were to look over at somebody get their name get their takeaway and you know learn learn what they learned today or what was the most impactful thing that they learned today and today I went to a breakout session with um, life by MJ and she is a local lifestyle influencer here in the city of Las Vegas and Nevada and super cute flat platform absolutely you guys have to go follow her she is going through kind of what I a journey that I really resonate with um as like 
just more of like a mindfulness and like kind of spiritual awakening. But what she was saying in her class today was about personal branding. And she used the word control a lot. And it really hit me because, you know, a lot of you guys know, I have a life outside of influencing, you know, a lot of, if you're a really close friend of mine, you know, sometimes the way I show up as an influencer, as a personal brand is different than how I am in person. And that's just me protecting my boundaries. That's just me showing up for me in my day to day life. You know, I'm not going to go spouting off, you know, all the dirty laundry kind of, so to speak. <clears throat> but the way MJ used the word control in her talk today was just, it really made me take a step back and go, I want to take control. I want to take back the control with the word control. Because for me growing up, you know, control is such a very dominating word. It's such a very like masculine, very like dictator -y kind of word, you know, it's a scary word, but I think the beautiful thing about putting control into your personal bus business and personal brand is that you control the narrative and that's okay. That's the beautiful thing about your personal brand is that you control the narrative. You control what your personal brand is. You control what people perceive of you. You have that control. You have that control to take it and basically run with it and, you know, build the personal brand that you want people to see. You have that control. You do. Not the people on the internet, not your followers, not anybody else in the world, not your family, not your boo, nothing. You do. You have the control. And whenever she said that, and she said that a few times, and the last time she really said it, it felt feminine to me. It felt beautiful. It felt very majestic and very, like just, it's okay to take control. It's okay to stand in that moment and say, I am in control of my brand and I am in control of who I am on the internet space. That is the D Diaries. And that really, that struck me because, you know, through the past few months, you know, and really just through COVID, I went through a huge transformation. I feel like the D Diaries went through a huge transformation. You know, we started off as, you know, a little side hustle and now it's my full-time gig. I mean, if you told me a year ago I'd be doing this, I'd be talking to a camera, all this stuff, I would have laughed at you, <laughs> you know. But the fact that, you know, we're evolving and we're taking control of what the D Diaries is, what we stand for, what we mean in the city of Denton. Whenever somebody says the D Diaries in Denton, you get... A vibe you get an energy we have control over how you feel about that energy and there is just something so beautiful about that and so beautiful about that brand and just the the branding aspect of it so I don't know if that made a lick of sense to anybody but you know MJ really had a really powerful just branding workshop for branding as a female entrepreneur, branding as a woman-owned business, and it was really great, and I re that was probably my favorite part of the day, and honestly, I think that was the one thing that I needed to hear today about the D-Diaries and, you know, just the journey we've been, we've been on the past year, really sitting back and reflecting on it and being like, okay, what is our brand? What does the D-Diaries look like? What does the D-Diary stand for? How do we show up authentically in you know, not only on our online space, but in the Denton community. How can we continue to show up online? Can we continue to show up for the Denton community as a brand? And it's it's just been, it's been a really amazing day, guys.
we decided we'd go to Meow Wolf after drinking a bottle of wine. So here we go. Let's go. We're gonna go find a secret door. So basically what had happened was, there's a whole story, there's a whole story involved in this and I didn't know that coming into it and now I'm fully immersed and I only have 30 minutes left before they close to figure out the story and uh, I fully know I'm not going to figure out the story but I'm going to Google it when I get home. So. that we are gonna go to Taco Bell. So we're celebrating Natisha's birthday um, in a Taco Bell. So the current time is 3.58 a.m. I have not slept. Will I regret this decision? Absolutely. Will I look back in five years and wish I was doing the same thing that I'm doing right now? Absolutely. So, I'm so tired, y'all. <laughs> I'm so tired. I think everybody thought that this 6 a.m. flight would be good because look at this. This is security. I made it back in one piece and I'm so tired. So tired. I have officially been up for over 40, no, over 24 hours. I can't even think straight. And I, um, I got home. I made it home um, at my regular time. Sweet Kaylee, <laughs> sweet Kaylee. We got to the airport at 4 a.m., like 4:10, 4 between 4:10 and 4:30. And um, Uber driver dropped me off at my terminal, then dropped her off at her terminal. And I got in, it was EDC weekend. So literally, like when I tell you, the line was so long to get through security, it was insane. So it was, if you've ever been to the Las Vegas airport, you know, like it, it like winds and whatever, and it's like the whole like length of the building. Okay, so all of that was full, filled, plus the line was wrapped around the like walkway all the way to the Uber, and lift pick up drop off spot and then going out the door like it was just insane the amount of people who were there at 4 a.m. in the morning for their flights 
So security for me was super quick. Um, they were very efficient in Terminal 1. And I probably waited 40 minutes to get into Terminal 1, like through security, then to Terminal D, and then I saw Starbucks. And I was like, yes, I'm here. But I looked at my watch and I was like, okay, I've got 30 minutes. This line is really long, but, but I have faith. I have faith. I have faith that the Lord wants me to have some coffee right now. And the joke's on me because the Lord did not want me to have coffee right now. Literally, they were boarding my um, group as the person in front of me was ordering. And I heard it. I looked at my watch. I looked at how many drinks they still had to make. And I really thought to myself, I was like, Lilia, who are you kidding? You don't need another thing to carry. You are tired. You're about to order some hot coffee going onto a plane. No, it's, it's not worth it. It's, you, you're going to sleep. You're going to be fine. It's okay. So I hopped out of line. The guy behind me left. He was like, man, you waited this whole time. I was like, yes, my plane is boarding. I gotta go. I'm not missing this flight. I want to go home. So got on the plane. Perfect timing. Made it. Made it home. Slept on and off on the plane. It wasn't really comfy. I couldn't get comfortable. I was just tired and sore and dehydrated and all the things. And so made it back to DFW. Dad picked me up and then took me to lunch and I was telling him about the trip and everything and came home started unpacking and now I have I've been working basically since I got home which I think is just funny and like totally me but yeah we made it home we're alive we're in one piece we had an amazing weekend I'm gonna do a quick recap a little bit later um after I like put my face on and like you know looked presentable and I have slept a little bit so we're gonna get a good night's sleep tonight. We're gonna unpack, we're gonna get some laundry done, and we're gonna start feeling like a normal person tomorrow. But for now, today is all the coffee, all the water, all of the liquid IV. If you wanna try liquid IV, I have a code. Catch it down in the caption. But definitely gonna be like guzzling that for the next couple days to rehydrate myself. So, anywho, I made it home. I'm alive. Kaylee made it home. She's alive. We're both alive. Natisha is still rocking it in Vegas and being a queen, celebrating her birthday. So send her birthday wishes down in the comments. She is amazing. She did an amazing job this weekend and I'm just so stinking proud of her. And I'm just so stinking proud of this community that we have of women supporting women here in Denton, Texas, that we will travel across the country to support you and to follow you and to like follow your dreams and hear your story. and just truly amazing it's truly an amazing weekend and i'm just so happy i got to experience it so definitely stay tuned for the recap